Hello everyone. Um, my last couple of videos have been kind of choppy because I'm not the smoothest of handheld people. This one's out in the garage. I look for the tripod parts. I'm missing some of the tripod parts. They're still boxed up. We haven't unpacked everything from moving yet. If you want to take a look at the garage, you can definitely see the garage has not been unpacked. It is a mess in here. This is going to be the last place we hit. We've got furniture we're going to sell. Bar stools, anyone? Some rugs, some other stuff. But anyhow, what we're here for today is not to discuss messy garages that need to be straightened up, but making a paint rack. I decided I want a paint rack for my paints to hang on the wall so I can see what my paints are. And I looked at buying some shelving for the walls. The shelving for the walls was going to be seven, uh, 50 60 dollars $100, and it wasn't going to hold very many paints. I'm going to be honest with you, it wasn't. And I went to the hardware store and took a look, and I can do better. So, I bought some wood, and I'm going to show you what I bought. It's all pre-cut, so I don't... I'm going to have to trim it a little bit, but not much. I'm not going to have to sit and do a lot of heavy measurements. So let me turn the camera, and I'm going to turn the viewfinder so I can see what I'm looking at. This is a piece of plywood. It's a 4 by 2 piece of plywood. These are very common at your large box hobby shops. They're really easy to find. Um, behind it, some poplar. This is two foot long. This is four foot long. And I'm going to lay this out on the ground by BB's bicycle here. So we can see exactly what this thing's going to look like. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set the camera off and put it away. And I brought some paint bottles with me so I can get some measurements. That is a Vallejo. It's bigger than the normal Vallejo bottle. So if that fits in there, the Vallejo bottles will fit. This is Microsoft. No, it's not. It's decal film. Micro scale makes it, though. This is some all clad. This is the biggest bottle of all clad I have. And that's the biggest they're going to get. And I have a lot of Tamiya paint because I like Tamiya paints. So I brought some of each. So I know the bottom shelf has to be bigger than the others to accommodate the all clads. Let me lay it out and I'll come back in a second and show you what that looks like. Okay, here's the first couple of pieces of board. Now, the poplar is supposed to be four foot long. You notice it has a small gap at the end. And the problem I have here is I want these on the end. Well, if I put them completely on the end, they're not going to have the plywood on the back, and I want the plywood on the back. So the poplar's going to have to be trimmed down just a tiny bit. And I'm going to have to measure it out to get it right. But you guys are getting an idea what this is going to look like. It's not going to be very deep. That's because it doesn't have to be to hold it to me a paint. I'm going to have to get it on the wall level, but it'll be fine. So let me lay them all out so I can show you what it looks like and figure how much I'm going to have to cut down the poplar. I've got my saw out so I can <laughs> cut it down pretty accurately. It's a miter saw. You can see it's Chicago brand that came from Harbor Freight Tools, which means it's not the best saw in the world. But I don't use it very often. Trade-off. If I'm going to use it every day, all day long, I'm going to get top quality. I use this once every six months. I can live with some fiddling for half the price. So let me lay some more of these out so you guys get a good idea and I'll be back. All right, this should give you an idea of what I'm attempting for. Putting the uh, shelves across horizontally while getting the spacing right. A thought occurred to me while I was laying it out because if I put it in there where some all clad will fit, I have one extra piece. I could just put the all clad bottles across the top. The other thought occurs to me is how am I going to mount this thing on the wall? Well, that is going to involve some wall anchors. And I'm just going to draw a hole in a couple, in three places on this thing and put it on the wall with some wall anchors. If I can find studs, drilling into the studs would work better. I have a stud finder. That shouldn't be a problem. I'll go over that when I get to it and I'll map out the studs in the wall. Small screws and studs make less holes in the wall than big wall anchors to support weight because this thing's probably going to weigh about 50 pounds when it's fully up. I have wall anchors that hold 45 each so 
three of those would be overkill. All right, now I'm going to measure it out and show you how much cut. All this was pre-cut. I have not cut any of this as of yet. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut the horizontal pieces to size. Then I'm going to worry about spacing them out on here so that they're spaced properly for the bottles. Because I do have quite a few Vallejo paints that I use for brush painting. And I would like to get those laid out in here well. As well as a lot of all-clad paint. In fact, I'm going to go get a smaller all-clad paint bottle. So it's not stacked across the top, all of it. I'll be back in a minute. Well, the good thing about the smaller all-clad bottles, they're about the same size as the Vallejo bottles. So as long as I make up for the big Vallejo bottle, it's all going to fit fine. All right, I'm going to start marking these out and seeing how far I need to cut them. I'll be back in a bit. All right, you can see how much extra is hanging off over the end right there. I'm going to mark it, and I'm going to lay out my saw so I can cut that length. I'm going to take a piece of scrap wood. Now, I don't know if anyone's paying attention, but I got a trash can by the bicycle full of scrap wood. I keep it around for this reason, so I can try a scrap piece first and make sure I've cut it and I'm cutting it right. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, everyone, I got a piece of oak here that I bought for another project that I never did. It is acting as a stop. So when I put my actual piece to cut in, I put it up against the oak. I cut every single piece identically. Now, I'm glad I used the scrap wood to begin with. I'm wondering what this wood is. It's not pine. It's probably oak as well, and I probably shouldn't have been using it for scrap wood. Can you see that? That's cut a trapezoid. It turns out that my adjustment back here was not on zero, so it's not cutting it square. It was cutting it at an angle. The later pieces were coming out square. This one wasn't. This was the second piece, but that's the end that wasn't cut square to begin with. It mate, mates up with this end like the, this piece, so they're not square. Neither one of them were square. But anyhow, it's cutting square now. It's cutting at the proper length. I'm going to start cutting my pieces. It's not real hard to use one of these if you've ever used one, okay? Now, some of your big box hobby shops would, um, stores would actually cut these for you if you ask. So you probably don't have to do this on your own. I didn't bother to ask them because I know I have the saw and I know how to use it. So I'm going to get after this one. One thing, proper eye protection as always. And keep your hands away from that. That'll take your finger off before you even know what happened. Okay? So I'm going to get at cutting these. I don't have a tripod, so you don't get to watch me cut them. I've got nine of these things to cut. And it won't take very long. That's the beauty of this saw. This is what I get. I thought it was spot on measured. It is off by about an eighth of an inch. It's about an eighth of an inch short. So i got to make it a little bit longer. Um, or I could just use them all. I think I'm just going to use them, cut them the way it is, and try to fudge it a little bit. I could also try to trim a piece off the end of this. I do have a table saw way back in that corner back there. But table saws are not real good for cutting plywood. And that's why I don't really want to do that. I'm just... I could do eight shelves and fix it, or I can use that one. I'm going to figure out what I do. Or did I get bad and just mismeasure this end? Nope. We're off by more like a quarter of an inch. Well, fiddlesticks. That quarter of an inch will look funny. I'm going to have to adjust it some. I'll be back in a bit. And I did cut pieces to test it with. <clears throat> I should have measured the length. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to quit being lazy about it. Well, I'm not perfect on my measurements. You can see that. There's a teeny little edge on it, but if I center it, it won't look too, too bad. I got them all cut. It didn't take very long, actually. Now the tricky part, measuring where I want the shelves and drilling the holes. I want to build the rack and then attach the plywood to the rack itself. I don't want to attach it to plywood first. It'll be easier that way. So what I need to do is get the table saw out, which is over there, not table saw, the drill press, which is right there. And measure up how far apart I want these shelves and drill the holes for the screws. 
and then screw it all together. Now the screws I have say you don't have to drill pilot holes. I'm not so sure of that because, well it's poplar. Poplar is a fairly dense wood. It's probably okay not to drill the holes in it. I didn't get real thick and heavy screws because I want to split the ends of this stuff. If I were to use some number 10 screws, I'm splitting the ends of these long rails. And I want to screw the rails into the side panel and then screw the uh, plywood into the rails, if that makes any sense, and the side panel. And I'll make it nice and strong and this thing isn't going to go anywhere no matter what I do with it. And that's the idea. Plus it'll look nice, especially if I get it um, finished up real nicely. I'm not going to do a heavy finish on it. I'm probably just going to use something like tongue oil because you can wipe it down with the tongue oil. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a little bit. And that's it. It just seals up the pores in the wood and that it leaves the natural wood color on it. Although everything in the room is dark, I might stain it dark. Not sure yet just to match everything else in the wood. The spray booth isn't. The spray booth is about that color. Since it's going next to the spray booth, I'll probably leave it like it is. And again, not really put a uh, varnish on it, nor um, polyurethane or anything like that. Just give it a good old tongue oil, the old style finish, where you wipe it on and just let the wood soak it up. All right, let me get mapping out where things go. I'm gonna put this saw away because I'm not using it anymore and bring the drill press over here because that's what I'm going to use and I got to map out two parallel lines on each one of these sides and put the crossbars on so I drill the holes precisely where I want them that's the only tricky part is going to be getting these side rails the holes drilled the pilot holes for the screws drilled correctly once that's done this thing's going to go together fairly quick I'll be back in a bit all right, I've got the lines laid out. They're not perfectly lined up. I'm not trying to be perfect. I just want them parallel where the screws are going to go. Two, one's go two's going to go there. Two's going to go there. So I can build my frame. You can kind of see it laid out what I'm looking for right there. Okay. Now I'm going to pre-drill some holes with this thing. And I'm going to drill some pretty small holes because these are some pretty small screws. This just to get things started so I know I've got them lined up properly. Now i got to lay out how far apart I want the shelves and get that centered so I can mark them so I know where to drill my holes. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, for the Tamiya paints, I've got these marked three inches between centers. And three inches between centers gives more than enough room for a Tamiya paint bottle. It will not, however, work for the Vallejos. The Vallejos need more than three inches. So will the all clad because all clad is almost the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more. That's going to fit an awful lot of Tamiya bottles. You can see that. I'm thinking I'm just going to make the next set a little bit bigger. So I'm going to get it in there for this. And let's see if I can get all my crossbars in there and we're going to figure out what it is between centers for one of those because that is the tallest bottle I have outside the large all club bottles. Okay if I do two at four and a half to fit all the Vallejo paints that leaves me just enough room to put the large uh, all club bottles in the very top. Now I have nine of these cross pieces one two three four five six seven. I have eight of the cross pieces so I'm going to have one extra. So keep that in mind if you want to duplicate what I did. If you only do Tamiya paints, well, you could have used all the cross pieces I put in here. I'm not using all Tamiya paints, so I'm going to make sure it fits everything. So let me get the both cross, both verticals measured out. I get the feeling we've got some rain coming soon, so I'm going to try to hurry. I can move this in the garage pretty easily. I didn't want to run the saw in the garage, but the drill press in the garage is no big deal. Let me get things marked out and drilled. I gotta go upstairs to get the drill bits because the drill bits are in some of those boxes labeled garage tools. I'm not digging them out today. And I might have some drill bits over here on the floor someplace. I just don't know where and I'm not gonna try to find them. But I do know where there's some drill bits inside the house. So let me get marking and then I'll get drilling and I'll show you drilling. Now why a drill press? It drills vertically up and down perfectly. Perfectly 90 degrees don't have to worry about it being straight and spot on. I'm not going to worry so much about these getting a starting hole in these because I don't think I'm going to have to if I do this correctly. 
my other concern is these screws yeah they're going to go in there far enough as long as I screw into the back of these from the back of the plywood we'll be good all right I'm going to get going on this back in a bit